Okay, so welcome back. This is part 12 in our series where we show you how to program your test instruments, your bench test instruments, to develop an application like you see here. And what we've got, as you can see on the bench, we've got a signal generator and my oscilloscope. And we are connected to the um, oscilloscope. And we are showing in this application, we are showing channel 1 and channel 2 uh, of what is shown on the oscilloscope screen. And I encourage you to look at the previous videos in this series where we developed this application. And we started out by developing the functionality where we could do a frequency response analysis where we vary the frequency output from the signal generator, apply it to whatever test circuit we want to test, and then measure the output voltage from the scope and plot the, the input frequency and the output voltage in this application. And in later videos in this series, we added the functionality that you see here where you can grab one or more channels worth of data in real time and update this chart. And we're in Visual Studio using C Sharp or whatever programming language you want. And every two tenths of a second, we're updating what's shown on the oscilloscope. And you can see our scope is matching what we see here. Now, what we're going to talk about in this video is how to get both of these channels displayed simultaneously and continuously updated uh, in our application. So now I'm going to vary the amplitude of this signal and you can see it respond on the scope and also in our application. And it's fairly quick response. So we're going to show you how to do the code to uh, add this functionality. So here is our application so far. Let's take a look and see if we can figure out what we're going to need to have two simultaneous plots of the two channels on our um, chart here. Well, uh, as you can see, we have a uh, capture update time. This chart is getting updated every 0.2 seconds. And over here we have a selector, either channel 1 or channel 2 in the top right. So if I select both channels, what changes in this to allow us to see both channels? Well, first of all, in terms of a chart in Windows Forms, we know that each channel is going to have to be a separate series. The, the blue one, the original one, is going to be series 1, and the new orange one for channel 2 is going to be series 2. So we're going to have to add a second series. Now what about the updating? How are we going to be updating the two waveforms? Well, previously, if you recall, we had the start waveform capture and we click it and it would update, but it would only update each time we clicked it. So when we click the button, the event handler will go out, grab one waveform of data, one scan of data, and plot it. And we click it again, it would do it again. So what we probably are going to want to do is have some kind of timer, some of timer event that will automatically go out and do it. And you can see here we have added the ability to have the user specify how often we're going to capture that waveform. So as you recall, we already have a system timer used for the sweep frequency response. So every, in this case, every one and a half seconds it goes through, changes the frequency of the signal generator, then measures the voltage coming into the scope and plots it. Um, this is going to be different because we've got a new chart and we're going to have a separate capture time. And we said before it's going to be a little bit faster probably because all you're doing is you're just grabbing data from the oscilloscope. We know we're going to have to have a new series. And also, if you know about the scope, each waveform has its own vertical scale. So what I've got here is the channel 1 waveform, the sine wave is going to be shown series one and it's got a blue vertical scale and this orange we're going to set up what's called a secondary y-axis all right and we talked about that in our um, videos on c-sharp windows forms charts so when we have both of these checked we're going to have two readings and we're going to have a timer is going to be doing the readings automatically so now each time step in this case two tenths of a second how are we going to read two channels? Well, we can go out and read one channel and plot it, and then read the second channel and plot it in that one time step. So we know that our time step is going to be modified to have two readings. Also, when we read these waveforms, we're going to want to tell our method that reads the waveform 
As you recall, we specified what channel it's going to read. You have to send a command to the scope to say, hey, give me channel one or channel two. So we're going to have to have something in our method that reads the channel, reads the waveform. We're going to have to specify which channel we want. So we're going to have to modify our method that reads a burst of data to specify which channel. So we got a couple series. We're going to have uh, a secondary axis here. We're going to want to change some colors. Um, we also know that the X or time scale for both of these readings is going to be identical. So we can probably use, you know, when we read channel one, we can probably use its X axis values in the channel two list of points. We can refer to the same x-axis values list in both of these. So that might save us a bit of uh, effort. One more thing, um, I have made it so that we are reading the x-axis in milliseconds. It's a little bit cleaner. Uh, you don't have to do that, but we'll show you how we're going to do this so we read in milliseconds. Let's look into the code, see how we're going to do it. So here is our UI that we have so far. And as we mentioned uh, previously, when we clicked this BTN wave to start the waveform capture, it just did it once, grabbed the data and plotted it. So what we have to do now is we have to modify the event handler in here to make this happen two, every two tenths of a second, which means we have to set the um, system timer to have an event every two tenths of a second, and it will go out and read uh, channel one or channel two or both. So we're going to have to start modifying this um, event handler. So we'll go into our code and go to the event handlers and BTN wave is what we're talking about. So as we had before, um, we're enabling some buttons. We're going into waveform mode. So waveform equals true. And we've got the timer one interval which is the two tenths of a second capture time, and we're enabling the timer. So now every two tenths of a second, we're going to go and we're going to try to update. Um, unlike previously, now we're going to do uh, channel one or channel two or both. So as we had before, we have an if statement. If you're in scan mode, do this. We haven't changed anything. If you're in waveform mode, uh, here we've made a bunch of changes. And what we're doing is what we said before, depending on which channel checkbox is selected, we're either going to read channel one or read channel two or read both. So we're going to have to specify which channel to read. So we've got some if else if. If channel one checkbox is checked and channel two checkbox is not checked, then we're going to clear everything on series two, and we're going to show we have to set up a series two. We're going to clear all the points and just read channel one. And we're going to be modifying this read scope waveform to now specify which channel you want to read. So uh, we're clearing channel two on the chart and we're reading channel one. Now, if channel two is checked and channel one is not checked, we're going to do something similar. We're going to clear the series one or channel one points and just read channel two and plot it. So pretty straightforward. Now, what if they're both checked? Else if channel one is checked and channel two is checked, um, we're going to clear both of the points and reread channel one and then channel two and plot them. So we're saying clear everything, then read and plot channel one, and then in series, pretty much, we're going to read and plot channel two. Now, if none of them are checked, what are you going to do? Well, we're just going to clear everything. Um, if you want, you can just uh, read channel one and just default to channel one, but I'm just clearing everything. The, the big worker here is going to be this read scope waveform, and we're now specifying which channel. And if we want two, we're going to do it in series. So that's it for the event handler. Then we can go to the method that is read scope waveform. And as you can see now, we've modified it to include this parameter integer chan or channel. As before, we are clearing the X values, the list of X values, um, the list of channel one values and the list of channel two values. 
Uh, here we haven't changed anything, TMC length, and this is um, total waveform bytes and increment double. And then what we're doing is we're saying, okay, if we're specifying channel one, we're going to change our command to request channel one. If we want channel two, we're going to change our command to, to select channel two, but everything else here is the same. It's still going to normal mode, um, in byte mode, and from value one to 1200 and so on. So we're gonna grab just like we did before, um, TMC number of bytes, we're not gonna change that, and I'm not even using that anymore, but um, here we're trimming the TMC header, no change. I've gotten rid of some text box data length in TMC bytes we don't really need anymore. And then we are coming up with a Y increment value, converting that to a, uh, it's a byte array, we're, we're converting that to a string and getting a string of the Y result, which tells us what the Y increment value. Now, as we said before, there's gonna be two values, one for each channel. So we're going to here say, well, if this was channel one, we're gonna take that Y result string and we're going to send it out to this new Y increment double one, which tells us what the increment or the scale for channel one Y values is. If it's channel two, we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna take that Y result, but instead we're going to come out with a Y increment double two, which is the Y channel scale. And then we're going to do the X increment values, which we're gonna use for both, so no changes here. We're basically um, doing a tri-parse and getting a X increment double. And once we've got the X values and the two Y values, we're adding those final waveform points and times to the corresponding list. So we're going through each value in the list. If channel one, then we're gonna say, well, those values we read are going to be applied to waveform Y wave one. If channel two, we're gonna apply those to Y wave two. And everything else here is the same. Now, one thing I've added is this X mult. And we said that we're going to have the X values in milliseconds rather than seconds because it's a little bit cleaner. So I've set up a value X mult, in this case is 1000. So any X wave values, I'll just multiply times a thousand to give us milliseconds rather than seconds. So at this point, we've come out with our Y wave one voltage values or Y wave two voltage values and the X wave values that are in milliseconds in the case we're using. So now we can just configure the chart and plot everything. So if it's channel one, we have chart one, series one, points, data bind, X wave and Y wave one. If it's channel two, we're gonna have chart one, series two, points, data bind, X wave and Y wave two. All right, so that will plot the values. Now, we also have to look at this configure chart waveform where we're now specifying which channel, volts per division and X increment double. So let's take a look at that, configure chart waveform method. So here's configure chart waveform. We're specifying what channel, volts per division, and in X increment. So we're clearing all of the legends. We don't want legends. If channel one, then we're gonna set up chart one, chart areas, and as we had before. If channel two, we're going to set up axis Y2, which is the secondary axis. And we're setting up a maximum, minimum, same as we did on the channel one uh, Y axis. So here is our right-handed secondary axis and we're setting it up. You can take a look at this and pause and type it in. We're also setting up our series two, which are on this Y2 secondary axis, uh, axis type, uh, axis type secondary, um, line width is one. We're gonna have color orange for the series and chart type dot line and then in either case, we're going to set up the X value, the X axis values, the interval, and we're gonna include the X multiplier, a thousand if we're gonna do milliseconds. And then we're just gonna use all of these and we're gonna add a title, X uh, axis title is milliseconds. And that's about it. So at this point, we should have everything we need to plot both of the channels on the waveform depending on what you select. 
that's about it for this one. If you like any of these videos, please hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications. Most of all, please let others know that we're here so we get some views. Really appreciate it. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.